Hi right, guys, it is an arctic blasted day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the paradise outside of Inverness, Florida on this otherwise gorgeous, I think we're Tuesday morning, January 21st, 2020. I believe so. The little dog and I need to head back out into the swamp for our continuing real estate adventures looking for waterfront property in Florida uh -huh, to survive uh, whatever's coming down the pike. And uh, but before we go, I just have a short and sweet chronicle of the collapse from you know, Al Jazeera. All right, before I do that, I want to send out two big thank yous. Uh, I do want to send out a big thank you to my buddy John Elliott for, uh, for all his kindness to supporting my work here on YouTube. And also a big thank you to Jennifer Ginsburg. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for your very kind PayPal donation to Collapse Chronicles and for anyone who has ever uh, supported my work on YouTube. I really, really do appreciate it. So uh, let's just dive in. I've got uh, three choices today here. Here's some Rolling Stone magazine, America's Radioactive Secret, oil and gas wells produce nearly a trillion gallons of toxic waste every year. An investigation shows how it could be making workers sick and connect contaminating communities across America. Okay, we might have to come back to that one. That's from Rolling Stone. What is on the Guardian's mind today? And I do appreciate my alert listeners sending me uh, this, uh, these stories. Anybody suffering the delusion that, uh, that the CFCs are on the decline. The Guardian has some bad news today. Study finds shock rise. Does that mean shocking rise? Study finds shocking rise in levels of potent greenhouse gas. Uh, scientists had expected a fall in levels of HFC 23 after India and China said they had halted emissions. Yes, efforts to reduce levels of this potent greenhouse gas appear to be failing, according to a study. Uh-huh. So imagine that China and India lying that they have uh, stopped producing these CFCs. Uh, anyway, but what I think we're, we're going to go over for today's Chronicle of the Collapse to good old Al Jazeera drawing dots between climate change and economic collapse. Okay. Uh, not sure who the BIS is. The, B, the Bank for International Settlements is the BIS. <clears throat> Green Swan climate event could cause our next financial crisis, according to the BIS. Uh, all right. You know, I've heard about this. Uh, I've actually interviewed people about black swan theory. So-called black swan theory was developed by author Nassim Nicholas Taleb to describe rare events that have an 
an outsized, often negative impact, and now the Bank of International Settlement is warning of a green swan event linked to climate change that could have wide-reaching consequences for the global financial system, I bet. Utter the term black swan in financial circles and it will conjure up images of an economic catastrophe triggered by a rare event people should have seen coming if only they had opened their eyes. Uh-huh. On Monday, the Bank of International Settlements published its riff on that theory, uh, on that theory in a paper titled The Green Swan. And I'm going to put the link to this Al Jazeera and then they link you to the full study, the full paper with all of their jargon. This is Al Jazeera putting this into plain English. In a paper titled The Green Swan, the Basel-based institution warns that climate change could unleash, quote, potentially extremely financially disruptive events, close quote, that could trigger our next global financial crisis. To contain the fallout, the BIS is urging global coordination among central banks, regulators, and supervisors, including jettisoning backward-looking risk assessment models that are not fit for gauging the far-reaching consequences of climate disruptions. We're talking about the far-reaching economic consequences of climate disruption. So, uh, I'm, I'm checking out some of the other headouts. All right. <clears throat> the number of extreme weather events has quadrupled over the last 40 years. Only 44% <clears throat> of these, these kinds of financial losses that have quadrupled over the last 40 years, only 44% of the financial losses caused by these type of events are now covered in the United States. In Asia, it is just 8%, and in Africa, only 3%. This is Luis Awazu Pereira da Silva, one of the paper's main authors, quote, I think we might be on the brink of observing something that might be behind the next systemic financial crisis. Uh -huh. If the more extreme climate scenarios start to play out, central banks having played a vital role in the financial crisis, might be asked to step in as the, quote, climate rescuer of last resort. There you go. The, cent the banksters behind it all are going to be the ones, the climate rescuers of last resort. But apparently, uh, Dr. De Silva uh, has a problem with this, quote, there is no silver bullet. Central banks are not going to save the world again. I'm a little unclear how central banks saved the world the first time. Did I miss something? I was of the understanding that it is the central banks, it is the banksters behind it all, that have put the world into the position that we're in right now. Apparently, uh, someone please remind me how the central banks saved the world the first time, but uh, make no mistake about it, the central banks are not going to save the world 
again. In a foreword uh, to the book, the head of France's National Central Bank, Francois Villeroy de Gala, de Gala, I don't know, French, who thought of the French language? I have no idea how to pronounce these French names, but anyway, uh, whoever this person is, added that climate change needs to be part of all economic and forecasting models. Of, of course, now it is nowhere in the mix. Uh, the book said current regulation based on capital requirements for banks will not be able to mitigate the catastrophic effect of climate change on the financial system. Do you think so? New policy mixes are needed instead involving government, central banks, and prudential or capital requirements, but that would require unprecedented international coordination at a time when the global framework for finance is, quote, seriously compromised. Mm -hmm. Regulators, whatever that word means, regulators monitor risk by using historical data and assumptions that are now, quote, largely irrelevant to assess future climate-related risks, close quote. Assessing the risks, therefore, requires a reset of the regulatory approach, which has already begun in the financial community with the development of forward-looking, scenario-based risk management methodologies. Yes, I bet. Uh, wrapping up with a quote from Vill Villaroy de Galau, quote, climate change poses unprecedented challenges to human societies and our community of central banks and supervisors cannot consider itself immune to the risks. We shall see. And then for more on this subject, uh, elsewhere in the Doomosphere, I uh, can't remember where it was in the Doomosphere yesterday. One of these Doomers uh, was talking about this uh, interview on NPR between this clueless NPR, NPR journalist being a mouthpiece for, uh, for Microsoft. Uh, as this, and so this is Al Jazeera's spin on that same story NPR was covering, <clears throat> you know, going into Davos. You know, there's, there's this big economic forum in Davos is getting ready to uh, start where they're promising they're going to take climate change seriously. So Al Jazeera has this comment, comment, Microsoft, Citibank, and Walmart make corporate climate a list. How Microsoft, Citibank, and Walmart are, uh, are being the uh, <coughs> responsible corporations <coughs> doing their part to save the planet. I haven't read the story. I don't know if uh, Al Jazeera <coughs> is being as shameless as NPR was yesterday, being corporate shrills for Microsoft and Walmart. Uh, here is climate change is the world's biggest risk says WEF. What is WEF? Is that the the World Economic Forum or something like that now claiming climate change is the world's biggest risk but of course 
the most important uh, message of all, which I probably should be covering, Greta Thunberg's <clears throat> message to Davos. You have not seen the last of us. <laughs> Greta Thunberg going to tell those corporate whores at Davos, Switzerland, they have not seen the last of Greta Thunberg, and uh, I hate to say you have not seen the last of Sam Mitchell or Sancho Panza here at Collapse Chronicles, but if you did enjoy this little video, uh, please spend a few seconds to thumb it up. If you did not enjoy this video, please spend a few seconds to thumb it down and by all means come over here and subscribe to Collapse Chronicles. But with that, I've got to wrap up today's Chronicle of the Collapse because the little, little dog and I have heard about a brand new, a brand new waterfront property for sale in Florida to, uh, to, what am I going to do, weigh the risks, the, the financial real estate investment risk of investing in waterfront property in Florida in the year 2020. So we need to go and get out there and enjoy this Arctic blast on the planet. Are you ready to head out? You're shivering or you're inside and you're shivering. Wait till you get outside. Bye guys. <laughs>